Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories like these. Now, let's get into today's story video. My wife and her best friend accused me of having an affair, then got angry when I didn't have one. My wife, 29 years old, and I, 31 years old, became parents in December of last year. The stressful birth had left my wife with postpartum depression, which she was unable to overcome. While she had intended to return to work as soon as possible following the birth of our child, she has been suffering so badly that we have decided to wait until our child is a year old and then review her situation. Each week, she has gone to counseling with a licensed professional. Because my wife is at home full-time, I've had to work longer hours to make up for lost productivity. This is something we discussed before to making this decision, and she was made aware of it from the beginning of our conversation. In the last few weeks, I received a call from my boss about a project that would need a significant amount of overtime in a short period of time. It would be good in terms of both money and professional advancement. It was brought up in conversation with my wife, who agreed that I should say yes to my job. During the four weeks that I would be working on this project, my mother-in-law and her best friend, Jessie, 29 female, last name altered, would come over to help me with some of the duties that I would typically do on my own. Jessie is a stay-at-home mom to her two little children, who are four and two years old. As time went on, she began dropping by my house during the day to babysit the kids with my wife. We realized three weeks into the project that we'd need a couple of more weeks to complete it, so we extended the deadline. That evening, I returned home and informed my wife of the situation. She indicated that she was okay with it, although she became rather cold in the following days as a result. After all, it hadn't been unusual behavior for me during the preceding few months, so I didn't take it personally and tried not to be offended. Jesse was still at home. One night during the project's last week, and I was relieved to discover her there. The fact that I didn't give it much consideration was that I just said hello to her and my wife before going to check on our infant. Jesse made a statement that I overheard before I could get into her room. She said something to the effect of, he doesn't even bother to come over to say hello. It's definitely a portent of things to come. I walked over to the other side and questioned as to what it was a sign of. My wife instantly burst into tears and Jessie started accusing me of having an extramarital relationship. She advised me that I must detest my wife since she suffers from postpartum depression, PPD, and that I am not attracted to her as a consequence of the weight gain she has gained through pregnancy. There is no truth to any of the assertions above. I'm trying my best to provide for our family while also aiding my wife with her postpartum depression, PPD, and I think she looks wonderful. The way she is right now, she has just refused to have with me, and I haven't pushed her to do so. Jesse then asked me to show her my phone, which I gladly obliged. I informed her that this was not the case. She said that it was evidence that I was guilty. I advised my wife that she was welcome to look at my phone if she so desired. Something inside of me was broken as she nodded her head. I believe it was the fact that she honestly believed I was having an affair that caused me to lose my cool. In addition, she expressed her dissatisfaction with me despite all we'd been through. As a result, she searched through her phone and discovered no evidence. Jessie started to assert that I had removed the evidence from my computer. She started ranting and waking up our child, so I told her she needed to leave the house immediately. She finally left and I rushed to comfort our child since my wife was still sobbing on the couch when I got there. When my daughter fell asleep for the second time, I sat down next to my wife and tried to explain what had occurred. I was unsuccessful. She informed me that she had been worried about my well-being since I started working so many extra hours. We had spoken about what a fantastic opportunity this was, and she had agreed to let me take on this project, so I told her of my plans. That the project's duration had been prolonged, she felt, was a weird turn of events. I told her that this happened on a regular basis. Further evidence was requested, so I texted and emailed her with timestamps from work, as well as pay stubs that demonstrated the OT. Despite the fact that she professed to trust me and expressed regret for her reservations, Jessie had been telling her that these were all signs that I was cheating on her. I questioned her about why she placed more faith in Jessie than I did and why she didn't confide in me about her fears and concerns. There were no words to express her dissatisfaction with the situation. For a few of weeks, the job was done. As a result of the project, I've actually decreased my workload and am striving to work a little less than I did before in order to spend more time with my wife and children. 
Nonetheless, I'm fatigued from attempting to do everything and becoming resentful since I'm aware that my wife does not place her confidence in me. Whenever I have a project, I always worry what would happen. Otherwise, am I expected to do errands on a certain date? Another scenario is when you are away from home for an extended period of time, such as on business. What makes you think I'll keep going back to the allegations of cheating? I try to bring it up a few times, but my wife claims it's not the proper time and that she's tired or sad at the moment. Even though I make an effort to be conscious of her feelings, I'm beginning to worry whether this means I'll never have any of my own. Nothing seems to be working for me right now. What are your thoughts on the best course of action for me? Update. I appreciate everyone's suggestions and encouragement in response to my last post. As many of you have pointed out, it should have been obvious. I need to get professional help and begin caring for my own mental health. I thank you all for your suggestions. An update has been requested by a small number of people, so I'm sending one, but it's not a very upbeat one. After dinner that night, I spoke with my wife and told her that I had decided to seek the services of an occupational therapist. I made no mention of her allegations or anything else. I just said that I was going through a tough period and needed help getting through it. She merely shrugged and encouraged me to go ahead and do whatever I wanted with my life. When I returned home from work the next day, our room in my home office had been removed from the premises. There are items all over the place. Documents of importance were throughout the place. Although I don't see her, our daughter is sobbing in her room. My wife has left her alone and her cell phone has been shut off as a result of this. I reach out to my in-laws as well as a few friends, but no one has seen or heard anything about her. I'm growing more anxious, so I call my mother and ask if she would mind watching the kids while I go look for her. My wife arrives at the house before my mother. Jessie is in charge of the driving. The only person that comes inside the house is my wife, not Jessie. She hasn't returned since I kicked her out for being offended by my behavior. Her tears demonstrates that she is clearly distressed. So, I'm curious about what happened. For a brief moment, I believe the house had been plundered. She starts ranting at me, accusing me of being unfaithful and claiming that the counseling session is a ruse to meet my mistress. Despite my attempts to calm her down and explain that it was not true, she lunged at me and punched me in the face. The bridge of my nose has been fractured. She became aware of what she had done and sat down on the couch, where she promptly fell asleep and stared blankly at the wall. I walked into my daughter's room and slammed the door behind me. I contacted my mother to let her know what had happened, she was already on her way, and my mother-in-law to urge her to come over and care after my wife, which she graciously agreed to do. I packed a bag for my child and we were on our way as soon as my mother arrived. My wife didn't even bother to lift a brow. We dropped my kid up with my father and then went to the emergency department for my nose-bleeding problem. My mother's brand new Subaru was splattered with scarlet blood. For the time being, my child and I are staying with my parents, while my wife is staying with her folks. A restraining order against Jesse is something I'm thinking about pursuing. My wife and I have decided to end our marriage. I adore her, but I will not live with someone who is harmful to me and who has the potential to hurt our child. I'm not going to file for divorce just yet, hoping that my wife will get the treatment she needs and that we will be able to come to an agreement. It has been brought to my attention by my in-laws that they are contemplating inpatient treatment at a local hospital. However, in the event of a custody disagreement, I will have everything documented. The fact that this is not my wife, and that this is a mental disease, causes my heart to ache. But I have to protect myself and our child, as well as give her some time to recover from her injuries. I'm hoping that this is the best choice for me. Thank you all once again for your assistance. Edit. Thank to everybody for your comments. After reading your remarks, I spoke to my parents and decided that I needed to make a police complaint for my daughter's safety. I'm on my way to the station right now.